What we'd like to do is show deployment of a self-healing in-memory data grid in the Gigaspaces ZAP 7.1, along with explaining the pieces that make up the Gigaspaces application environment with a very simple set of applications that write into and read from the data grid. We're going to use two commands to get started. One is the GSUI, which gives us a view into our grid. The other is the GS Agent. The GS Agent makes services available to a grid. By default, it starts up three different types of services. One service is the lookup service. The, uh, this provides auto-discovery services to the grid through multicast. Unicast is also supported, of course. The second service is the Gigaspace container, or GSC, which actually provides the implementation of the data grid. This would be an analog to a servlet container for J2EE, and it, it can host a number of applications or grids in various roles, backup or primary. Another service is the Gigaspaces Manager, the GSM, which provides the command and control of the grid. The GSM keeps track of the various GSCs, routing data and electing the GSCs into primary or backup roles at need. So here we've started up the GS Agent with eight GSCs. The default is two. If we look at the GSUI, we can see all eight GSCs. They happen to have come up in order, which is pretty unusual. We see our GSM here, along with our logs and our lookup service. So what we're going to do is deploy an in-memory data grid. Now, one thing I should point out here, we've all got one host. Uh, this is actually pretty unusual. Normally you'd have multiple hosts and we could start up other hosts and they'd all be listed here and this one user interface could actually see the entire grid. So this is actually a very useful utility and there is a web form of this as well. So deploying an in-memory data grid, we're going to just create something originally called example. Um, we're going to set up uh, a, you know, a, a partition space with two primaries and one backup each, which means the data will be routed between the two primaries and then backed up you know, to the backup so we don't lose any data. Partitioning is really important because it means the data is spread across our grid and staying all in one portion of the grid. It's less efficient than allowing the system to locate everything itself because ordinarily it would fill one up and then you know, roll over to the other but it does enable us to spread processing more efficiently for you know, what we would call a real application. We're not gonna do one here that ordinarily you would want partitioning to be equally balanced. Now, let's go ahead and deploy this. And what we'll be able to see here is that we can figure out which one is being used to log. So here we can see GSC1 is being deployed to, GSC2 is not, GSC3 is not, so you can see here that we can actually see our logs. And again, this is all in one JVM, on one machine, not one JVM. This is actually nine, you know, 10 JVMs. But uh, and we could actually see all of it across all of our hosts if we happen to have more than one. Here we can see our actual deployment. We have GSC1, which is our, actually our second primary. Our, primary. our first primary is GSC7, and its backup is GSC4. Our second primary is GSC1, and its backup is GSC5. If we come over here, we can actually see all of this laid out. Here it doesn't give us our machine topology because it's not important, but here we can actually see our entire grid as a, as a single unit, as well as looking at the backup and the containers and things like that and the relationships between them. So let's take a look at our application. This is actually very simple, all it does is write a user POJO into the space. And we've actually used some annotations on the POJO to force routing the way that we want it to be, which is done right here. This will actually do a natural routing on a field. Um, we don't have to use any of these annotations. They're entirely optional. Um, we could get by with you know, letting the system do its own routing, like we said. But we wanted to kind of give it a little few hints to say, use this to route so we have natural balancing to show off our application a little bit better. The GSUtil, we're using this just to get the space. We could use spring for this. In fact, that's the preferred method. Uh, but here I just wanted to do it declaratively and without having the spring dependency. So our first application actually acquires the space, then writes in 5,000 records. Uh, this is just a matter of populating the records and doing a space.write once we have our space here. We're just doing space right, and then we're having a small delay, and then we're showing how many records we've got, so we have some idea of processing time. Um, the delay here is obviously not required. Uh, in fact, this is very poor code. Ordinarily, we'd use multiple threads, um, 
you know, we'd probably do an async write in the first place. So this could actually run in the time that it takes for me to tell you it's running. This could actually have finished. This URL is actually kind of neat. Um, what we're doing here is we're telling it to use the Jenny protocol. Uh, we're telling it to use any host, any container, and then the space name here. So if we look back at our GSUI, you see that we have the example space. So um, we have, you know, really one host, but we have all of these different containers, and the containers are named example.1, example.2, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We aren't using that because we don't, you know, really want to. We want to let the system determine where to write everything itself. So let's go ahead and run this thing once just to see what happens. So here it's acquiring the space and it's running the log. So as you can see, it's just loading all of these records. Now, if we go back over to our GSUI, look at our deployed processing unit, look at our operations, and you can see the number of instances is just climbing, climbing, climbing. If we look up here, we see the number of instances records here is actually going up. It should stop at 2,500, which is what we want. Looking at the backup, we also see 2,500, the same here, and the same for its backup. Nothing really spectacular here, right? Well, let's go ahead and kill off GSC7, which is one of our primaries. So we terminate this. Now what you'll see is when we come over here, this is our backup. What we should see is the system doing another, doing creating a new primary, which is done here as example.2. And so we, now we have another set of, de, of de, we haven't lost anything really is what, what's happened. We've deployed over, it's automatically done a failover, it's copied across all of the data. We have a self-healing system, even though we killed one of the grids just out of the blue, uh, one of the containers, it just automatically replicated over and saved all of our data. Now we can even do this while we're running, but let's go ahead and show the read first. So our read is an exact analog. We basically get the space with the same code we had before. We're actually building a list of integers. We're actually gonna pull everything uh, randomly rather than sequentially. So we're building a list of integers, shuffling the list, and then pulling them out. Um, we maintain a separate count because obviously the, this index will, can't tell us how many we've gone through. Gigaspaces uses uh, by default a, a query by example mechanism. Uh, we can use a, a SQL-like query. Uh, there are a number of different ways we can pull, pull data out, but this is simply one of them that allows us to pull data by key. Uh, we use a take if it if exists, so if something shouldn't happen to be in the space, we don't block or, or wait for it. We just go ahead and cruise through. So the one thing about this, this is a destructive read. So when we're done with this code, the space will be empty provided we've read all of our records. So let's go ahead and run this. What we're gonna do is after we show this, we're actually gonna go back and rerun the load and delete data as we go. You can see here, what's happening is we're pulling real data back out. This is the data that looks like it would have had we written it in. It's kind of funny URLs here, but um, you know I think that's okay for an example. So you can see how the data came back out. Again, it was kind of slow because we're single threaded and we're pulling data out like this. Now let's go back to our UI and figure out which host we want, which uh, container we want to kill next. We're gonna kill GSC4 next. So let's rerun our load. And we're going to kill GSC4 as we're loading. So here we're running. Let's go back to it and make sure we're actually done. Okay, we're, we better hurry here. Now we terminate. Now we come over here, and we see here that the system has automatically detected that something's going on, so it's retrying. It normally takes about six to eight seconds to actually do the promotion and re-election and resynchronization. You can tune this, but that's the default, which is usually good enough for a lot of grids. So now if we look back over here, we haven't lost anything. We've still got our 2,500 records in every one of our systems. So we've seen a self-healing system. Now it can do the same thing for a read. Now our next elected primary, let's take a look here, is gonna be GSC1. Let's go ahead and kill off GSC1 while we're reading this time. So we come over here. 
to run the read. Now we're running the actual application. Let's terminate this one. We go back to our, our console here and we can see again, it's still talk, trying to talk to that original space. It's going to do a failover. It's running the failover right now and then it just picks up right where it left off. We haven't lost any data. The system is no slower than it was before after we get through the delay. Uh, everything is running normally. We still read our 5,000 records. No data was lost, even though we pretty much destructively killed the space as we went through. Um, so what we have seen is a deployment and a uh, use of a self-healing in-memory data grid with a very simple application uh, using a POJO. Uh, future screencasts will show how to do event notification and scaling, you know, really horizontally to handle as much load as we want to throw on the system. Thank you very much.